A state Supreme Court judge deeming one of New York's strongest gun laws unconstitutional. The extreme risk protection order law is also known as the red flag law. It allows law enforcement to temporarily seize a person's guns based on someone else making a written allegation in a petition to a judge that the person poses a harm to him or herself or others. The attorney who successfully argued the unconstitutionality of the red flag law says this law allows a very quick and easy mechanism to deprive somebody of their fundamental Second Amendment rights. You have people essentially who are not medical professionals expressing medical opinions that result in the deprivation of rights. And you have a procedure that essentially allows somebody to lose those rights without ever having gone in front of a judge. Recently, Justice Thomas Moran deemed the red flag law to be unconstitutional. Daniel Strollo says the judge's decision can be considered when deciding subsequent cases in the 7th Judicial District. New York's red flag laws deemed unconstitutional. Welcome to another installment of the Connecticut Gun Bench. Today's video is brought to you by PA and Firearms LLC. PA and Firearms, your NRA certification and multifaceted gun training. You can reach us at 203-300-6343 or use our website at www.panfirearmsllc.com. As always, there'll be a link in the description box below. Let's talk about this. This is breaking news. This is huge for the Constitution and the rights of the individual. I wanted to get this out. This is a uh, New Year's Day, and this comes across my feed, as you saw from the opening video, a New York judge has deemed New York's red flag law unconstitutional. And the judge in this case is a Judge Mor Thomas Moran, okay? Once again, I always provide information because it's not just me saying, I'm gonna give you the facts. Okay, so this is just a briefing of that case and it's called GW Petitioner against CN Respondent. I'm assuming they're covering their names up to give them a non, you know, make them anonymous, which is fine. But this, once again, just briefly, I'm gonna go over this to, so you get an idea of what's happening here. And this is in New York, of course. On August 30th, 2022, Petitioner GW filed with this court an application for a temporary extreme risk protection order. In his application, GW alleged that his estranged girlfriend, CN, was a threat to herself, the petitioner, or another person. In support of his turbo request, GW submitted various statements in which he alleges Ms. CN indicated that she would harm herself by means of a gun or firearm should she be able to gain access to the same. However, the allegations submitted to this court and accompanying, accompanying the turbo request were statements allegedly being made by Miss N from December 5th, 2020, up through and including February 27, 2021, including Mr. W's petition against alleged Miss N's acts occurred less than six months ago. In an abundance of caution, on August 30, 2022, this court issued a turbo order which prohibited, prohibited Miss N from purchasing or possessing any firearms, rifles, or shotguns, and ordered her to surrender any within her possession. The matter was then adjourned to September 2nd, 2022 for purposes of hearing on the merits. Additionally, Ms. Hen had his pistol permit, which they had, that had been previously issued by Monroe County Court Judge on September 7th, 2022. Monroe County Court Judge Julie Han suspended Ms. Hen's pistol permit based upon the allegations in a turbo petition and the issuance of the turbo order. Thereafter, Mr. W submitted a supplement, sub, excuse me, sub, supplemental affidavit notarized October 25th, 2022, in support of his request for a final extreme risk protection order. Mr. W's allegation, affidavit alleged that Ms. N was attempting to access Mr. W's safe at the house that was presently occupied by Ms. N. Further, Mr. W alleged that the safe contained weapons and guns that could be used by Ms. N to hurt herself petitioner or others. I want to stop right there for a second because I'm reading this story. I'm beginning to see, I, honestly, because remember, it's just Mr. W's alleged accusations against Miss N. Obviously, they're not married. And obviously, they share some kind of, uh, you know, common domicile here. I'm beginning to suspect that this is, uh, you know, a, a kind of a little revenge thing going on here. But that's speculation. There's nothing here to say that. But 
reading this, that's what I'm getting. Now let's get to the meat of this. Prior to a hearing being held in the issuance of an AIRPO, Ms. N retained Daniel Estrolo, Esquire, as her counsel for purpose of defending her rights by attempting to quash the pending TERPO and prevent the issuance of an AIRPO. Attorney Strollo appeared before this court and indicated that he was challenging CPLR 6342 constitutionality. As required by law, Strollo served the New York State Attorney General, placing him on notice of his intentions with this motion. Attorney Strollo's motion was returnable on November 7th, 2022. Prior to the return date, the Attorney General sent out a correspondent to this court wherein Mr. Esther, I'm not even try that one, Deputy Solicitor General acknowledged that Attorney Strollo had informed his court of his intentions to challenge CPR, CPLR 6342 constitutionality, but that the Attorney General's office declined to intervene pursuant to executive law. Jump right down to here. This is the, here it is. The question presented is whether CPLR Article 63-A sufficiently protects the New York citizen's right, due process rights, when, as here, the state denies a fundamental right to wit by infringing on that citizen's right to keep and bear arms under the Second Amendment of the United States Constitution. This court holds that CPLR 63-A does not sufficiently protect a citizen's right and therefore is constitutional. And he says why. Prior to adjusting the constitutionality of CPLR 63-A, the court has looked for guidance from the Supreme Court's recent decisions in New York State Rifle Pistol Association versus Bruin. In Bruin, the court recognized that the Second and Fourteenth Amendment protect an individual's right to keep and bear arms for self-defense. Bruin at 2125. Further, in following the lead of District Columbia versus Heller, the Bruin Court reiterated that when the Second Amendment's plain text covers an individual's conduct, the constitutionally presumptively protects that conduct. And to justify a firearm regulation, the government must demonstrate that the regulation is consistent with the nation's historical tradition of firearms regulation. Bruin at 2126. And there it is. And he also goes on, I'm going to leave this in the description box. He also goes on to talk about McDonald, Chicago, that the Second Amendment is not a second class right subject to an entirely different body of rules than the other Bill of Rights guarantees. So huge news. That's huge because now this is going to have to go to the next level. The state of New York is going to have to challenge it and move it up to the next level and go all the way to the Supreme Court, which will set a precedent of making red flag laws across the country unconstitutional, which they are. It's deprivation of rights and property without due process. I have made many videos on red flag laws and I've repeatedly said, anyone can make an accusation against another person. It's obvious, well, I'm saying it's obvious, not factual, that there's some kind of lover spat going on between these two individuals. Because this person said that the other person Made, th made remarks about harming themselves and other people, but the presents no proof other than his word. That's not enough, in my opinion, to go ahead and turn somebody's life upside down because these things do that. This is exactly what red flag laws do. You don't know you've got any scrutiny coming into you until the police show up at your door and take your, take your property from you based on the word of someone else. I want to make sure that got out. This is huge because this is going to set the precedent for all red flag laws across the country. Awesome. This is great. But let me know what you think. As always, you can leave your comments in the comment section below. And as always, any statements of violence or statements that lead to violence will be removed. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you're notified the next time a video goes live. I will see you on the next one. Peace.